In this video, we're going to be talking about one of Britain's most remarkable insects, the hornet robberfly, and how I've become borderline obsessed with this amazing creature. The story of me and a hornet robberfly goes back 30 odd years to when I first got this book, the Collins Gem Insects. And while this page, full of some rather awesome insects, probably caught my attention more than any other, when I turned to the robberfly page, there was this huge fly called the hornet robberfly. And in later years, I'd read that it was the biggest fly in Britain as well. Although that's a bit debatable, as the giant crane fly is probably as long, and the dark giant horse fly is almost certainly heavier. Flash forward to 2009, and I'm walking around Thursday Common with a bunch of friends from the Wild About Britain forum. And as I'm walking along one of the small ball walks, my friend behind me goes, what on earth is that? And I turn around to be greeted by a familiar looking insect, but not one I'd seen before. It was the hornet robberfly from my books. Just as I said, I think it's a hornet robberfly, it took off and caught a grasshopper in mid jump before landing on a log, where I got this okay photo. And that is where the obsession started. I went to Thursday Common most summers after that, but I never managed to lay eyes on a hornet robberfly. In hindsight, probably because I was going too early in the year. But in 2015, I went to RSVB Arn in Dorset. And there, in the wildflower meadow, not on the heath like you'd expect, I found some hornet robberflies. And as you can see, I got some photos. But of course, being in a meadow, it didn't have nice sandy paths like on the heath. Instead, I had a rough cut grass path, which meant lots of objects in the way when I tried to photograph them. But I got a few okay photos, as you can see here. In 2017, I walked around what felt like the whole of Thursley Common, trying to find a hornet robberfly. And I got this right at the end of the day. I only managed a couple of shots, the sun went in and it flew off. I did a bit better in 2018 when I found this one hanging around some horse poo. I even managed a nice wide angle shot. And I attempted a couple of stacked images, but the very harsh sunlight meant they didn't come out as well as I hoped. That nice close up macro still proved elusive. In September 2020, after they eased the Covid restrictions and let us travel a little bit further, I went to Thursday Common and I met up there with Dr Erica McAllister, who's the fly curator at the Natural History Museum. Now, despite having seen many different wonderful species around the world, she'd never seen a hornet rubber fly, other than a specimen in a drawer. We walked around for a few hours with me as a supposed sight expert, her as the fly expert, and of course the person that spotted it was her partner. I let Erica enjoy this one and got a few shots from a safe distance. We walked around for a few more hours, but then Erica and her partner had to leave. So I carried on walking round. I tried for a few more hours and was actually heading back to my car when I flushed one from the edge of the path. And thankfully it landed just a few meters ahead. So I snuck in close and got a few shots and then the sun went in and I was waiting for it to fly off, but it didn't. It just stayed there. I went for broke, put on the extension tubes and went into minimum focus distance and took a stack shot, which was this, which I was really pleased with. Firstly, it's a great site for hornet robberflies, but you do have to put the miles in. In fact, one year I walked over 20 miles in two days. So when I was given a tip off that there was a site in Oxfordshire where I wouldn't have to walk quite so far to find them, I headed there. And it turned out to be a good tip as I got one almost straight away. And I found one particular individual that hung around the same area for a couple of hours. So I got plenty of shots. I even got some photos with my probe lens. And while at the site in Oxfordshire, I also tried some filming for the first time. Some of the footage was a bit shaky, but it was quite cool to see. I even managed to get a shot of one eating a dung beetle. But I had been told a few years before that there were hornet rubber flies not far from my house, within walking distance in fact. And I checked out this field a couple of times, but I'd never seen any over there. However, in 2023, I popped over there looking for hornet rubber flies, but all I found to start with were these fire bugs, which are fantastic little creatures. And then I spotted this hornet rubber fly right next to the path. After I found that initial rubber fly, I then managed to find a mating pair, something I'd not seen before. And they seemed quite busy with what they were doing and let me get really close with my probe lens. So I got some nice footage and a nice shot too. And since then, I've been coming over here every year and I've had mixed results on different days, but generally I've been restricted to where the footpath is until this year, when I met the person that's grazing the horses here, 
and he's giving me permission to wander freely around. And within half an hour of getting permission to go off the path, I film this. It's like I've gone full circle, a hornet robber fly eating a grasshopper. I even managed a stacked photo too. So now let's talk a little bit more about these wonderful insects and why they are so cool. At up to 28 millimeters long, which is just over an inch, the hornet robber fly is one of the largest true flies in the UK. The adult has yellow and black markings like that of a hornet, hence its name. They are predators of other insects, taking other flies, grasshoppers, dung beetles, and sometimes even wasps and other hornet robber flies. They hunt rather like a darter or skimmer dragonfly, sitting on a warm patch of ground or plant and darting up to grab passing prey. They catch their prey in mid-air, using their long legs, which they then stab with their mouth parts. They have stiff hairs around their mouth to protect themselves from struggling prey. And that long stabbing beak is used to inject venom in to immobilise their prey and make it easier to eat, which they do by using those mouth parts like a straw to suck out its insides. After mating, the female lays her eggs on or near dried out dung. Hornet robber flies are usually found on lowland heaths, downs and open habitats like grassland. Hornet robber flies also make a buzz like a hornet, as well as mimicking its coloration. It's believed they do this to fool predators, something that would come in very useful if you have a habit of sitting out in the open. Unfortunately, they have declined in many areas, at least in part due to cows and horses being treated with worming treatments, which make the dung sterile and free of the prey insect species they need, and may make it toxic to them as well. And they are now limited to only 40 sites across southern and southwest England and South Wales. What makes them even more vulnerable is that the adults are site loyal, and one study found they do not fly more than a few hundred metres from suitable habitat. This is a particular problem here in Essex, where there is only a few areas of acidic grassland suitable for them. In fact, if all the planned developments go ahead, my site for hornet robber flies may end up being the only reliable spot for them in the whole of Essex.